Good day, this is Samantha Marchand from DS Biology 3C and together with all of my group mates, we will be presenting the revolutionary genome editing that could potentially change everything involving genes. From curing diseases to repairing genetic disorders, this is no other than the CRISPR-Cas9. Here is our topic outline, introduction, brief history, principle and types, methods, applications, and finally, scientific studies. So what is genome editing? It is a group of technologies that give scientists the ability to change an organism's DNA. It allows genetic material to be added, removed, or altered at a particular location in the genome. Several approaches to genome editing have been developed. The most recent and is known as an emergent healthcare trend is the CRISPR-Cas9. CRISPR stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeat. It is a specialized region of DNA with two distinct characteristics. The presence of nucleotide repeats and spacers. Repeated sequence of nucleotides is the building blocks of DNA and are distributed throughout a CRISPR region. Spacers are bits of DNA that are interspersed among these repeated sequences. Cas9 is a CRISPR-associated genes in nucleolase, or enzyme which acts as molecular scissors to cut DNA at a location specified by the guide RNA or gRNA. The figure that you can see now is the CRISPR timeline from its discovery to gene editing and the future it holds. It all started when the discovery of CRISPRs in the bacteria E. coli in 1987 was accidentally identified by Japanese scientist Yoshizumi Ishinu and his colleagues. After six years, the discovery of Mycobacterium tuberculosis in 1993. In the early 2000s, Mohika discovered that CRISPR-Cas systems function as a defense mechanism to prevent repeated infections by the same virus. In 2012, Church, Doudna, Charpentier, and Zhang hijacked CRISPR-Cas9 for genome editing that it can be used as a cut-and-paste tool to modify genomes. Three years after, science named CRISPR as the breakthrough of the year in 2015. Finally, in the near future, CRISPR-Cas9 may also be used to cure genetic disorders, modifying the Cas9 nuclease to perform targeted epigenome editing. As more applications are uncovered, there is practically no limit to what science can do. The next reporter will further discuss how this amazing genome editing tool works. In CRISPR-Cas systems, there are three major types of system that are at the top of the classification hierarchy. They are distinguishable according to the presence of their three unique signature genes, Cas3 for type 1, Cas9 for type 2, and Cas10 for type 3. Additionally, types 1 and 3 are found in both bacteria and archaea. Type 2 is unique to only bacteria. The bacterial type 2 CRISPR-Cas system is the most studied and best characterized of the three types in which Cas9 protein is the critical component. Our report will be focusing on this second system. Now, let's go to the principle. The type 2 CRISPR-Cas system is a prokaryotic adaptive immune response system that uses non-coding RNAs to guide the Cas9 nuclease to induce site-specific DNA cleavage. This DNA damage is repaired by cellular DNA repair mechanisms either via the non-homologous end joining repair pathway or the homology directed repair pathway. The aim of this genome editing tool is to develop different genetically modified organisms and to treat several genetic disorders by inserting, removing, or deleting sequences from a genome of that organism. So, how does it work? For a better understanding of the mechanism, let's define related terms. First is the sgRNA. It stands for single-stranded guided RNA. It's a nucleic acid sequence used in gene editing for target-specific cleavage. This makes sure that the Cas9 enzyme cuts at the right point in the genome. 
It consists of CRISPR RNA and tracer RNA. CRISPR RNA are sequences that bind with the target sequence and the tracer RNA binds to the nuclease domain. Next is PAM. PAM helps the Cas9 recognize the sgRNA. This will give a signal to Cas9 for cleaving the DNA. Next is NEDG. It is a pathway that generates insertions and deletions in double-stranded break DNA repairs. As you can see in the figure, the process starts with a single guide RNA consisting of a CRISPR RNA sequence that is specific to the DNA target and a tracer RNA sequence that interacts with the Cas9 protein. It then binds to a recombinant form of Cas9 protein that has DNA endonuclease activity. The resulting complex will cause target-specific double-stranded DNA cleavage. Lastly, the cleavage site will be repaired by the non-homologous and joining DNA repair pathway. At this final stage, the cut is repaired introducing mutation. With this mechanism, the CRISPR-Cas9 technology has revolutionized genome editing, allowing a previously unattainable level of genomic targeting, efficiency, and simplicity. Genome editing is achieved once the two components of the CRISPR-Cas9 system have been expressed in living cells. This is done by several methods either through non-viral or viral gene delivery systems. There are two common methods under non-viral gene delivery systems, the chemical methods and physical methods. Lipid-mediated transfection involves the use of cationic lipids or cationic polymers. First, the negatively charged phosphates of the DNA backbone associate with these positively charged lipids or polymers forming a complex called liposome. The liposomes, which are essentially vesicles containing the exogenous DNA, can then merge with the cell membrane and release their content inside the cytoplasm. This has the advantage of high efficiency in a broad range of cell lines. However, that efficiency depends on the optimization of culture conditions for each cell type. The principle of calcium phosphate transfection involves mixing the DNA with calcium phosphate and form a precipitate. Calcium phosphate also helps in binding to the cell surface, and from there, the DNA enters the cell by endocytosis. This has been a common method since the early 1970s due to its inexpensive components that are easy to avail. Depending on the cell type, however, calcium phosphate may not be a suitable transfection method as it can have cytotoxic effects. In addition, reagent consistency such as small changes in pH can result in compromised transfection efficiency. As the name suggests, electroporation uses electrical pulse to physically create temporary holes in cell membranes and allow foreign DNA to enter the cells. This method allows various types of DNA to be readily introduced into cells without limitations of DNA size. On the other hand, the main concern with this method is the substantial cell death caused by the high voltage pulses. The use of this method requires more cell numbers compared to the chemical transfection methods. While non-viral methods are sufficient to deliver foreign genes into cells, they are transient expressions most of the time and the efficiency can be low depending on the cell type. So in order to maintain gene expression with high gene delivery efficiency, most researchers will opt for viral vectors. There are three types of viruses commonly used for gene delivery in living cells. These include lentivirus, adenovirus, and adeno-associated virus, or AAV. Lentivirus are single-stranded RNA viruses belonging to the family Retroviridae. They enter the cells through the interaction of viral envelope protein and cell surface receptors. Once inside, they will stably integrate their genome to host cell chromosomes. Long-term transgene expression is thus achieved in target cells which provides a major benefit to gene expression researches. Adenovirus are non-integrating, linear DSDNA viruses that enter target cells via receptor-mediated endocytosis. They are also known for their outstanding delivery capacity of foreign DNA fragments up to 36 kilobases, as well as their ability to give almost 100% transduction rates on many dividing and non-dividing cell types. In 
Instead of combining its own DNA with the genome of the host cell, adenoviruses remain as an episome within the infected cells giving transient gene expression. One important thing to note about them, however, is that they tend to cause strong immune and inflammatory responses among animal models. Adeno-associated virus, or AAV, is the most promising candidate among all the recombinant viruses for gene therapy owing to its non-integrating nature and the lack of pathogenicity in animal models. It's also a very attractive tool in regenerative medicine due to its differential tropism that can be achieved with different AAV serotypes. For instance, AAV2 presents natural tropism only towards skeletal muscles, neurons, and hepatocytes. The downside of AAV application is its small genome size restricting its cloning capacity. All three virus types are required to be modified into replication-deficit viruses in order to be applicable for gene delivery. They offer a very simple procedure allowing for high-efficiency transduction in both proliferating and creasing cells. On the downside, these viruses are often technically challenging and labor-intensive to produce. Next is about the medicinal and agricultural application of CRISPR-Cas9 system. First is about medicine, specifically in therapeutic application. Cancer treatment. CRISPR-Cas9 mediated gene editing of proto-oncogenes or tumor suppressor genes offers great potential as a treatment for lung cancer. Drug resistance to chemotherapy is the main reason for the poor efficacy of current treatments for patients with lung cancer. CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing technology can be used to evaluate genes targeted by chemotherapeutic drugs and to identify new pathways to reduce or eliminate resistance to chemotherapy in lung cancer. Targeted drug therapy has become an important approach in lung cancer treatment. However, drug resistance is a growing concern. But CRISPR-Cas9 can lower the resistance of tumors to these molecular targeted drugs or inhibitors by editing related genes, which will benefit patients with lung cancer. Second is tissue regeneration. Recent reports indicate that CRISPR-Cas9 may be an essential tool to improve cell differentiation. CRISPR technology has been used to derive a variety of cell types for transplantation, including muscle cells for the treatment of muscular dystrophy and hematopoietic stem cells for the treatment of sickle cell anemia. Together, these results demonstrate that CRISPR-Cas9 technology can be applied for directed cell differentiation and implantation. Next is the application on gene therapy. Huntington's disease is an inherited neurological condition caused by accumulation of mutant Huntington protein within the brain which results in cognitive impairment, dementia, and death. Using mouse models, researchers have shown that CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing can knock out production of these mutant proteins. CRISPR-Cas9 editing is sufficient to reduce mutant protein production by up to 90% and shows promise as a therapeutic solution. Additional studies are ongoing using humanized Huntington genes. Next in therapeutic application is about HIV and viral diseases. Gene editing can provide new strategies and therapeutic applications against infectious viral diseases. HIV has been effectively eliminated in patients using gene therapy to delete receptors essential for viral cell entry and infection. Recent studies using CRISPR technology have shown that mutation in CCR5 and CXCR4 receptors in both induced pluripotent stem cells and primary CD4 plus cells can lead to HIV resistance in lineage derived from these cells. In agricultural applications, researchers are using CRISPR-Cas9 in several agricultural plant species by targeting various genes of interest for improved nutrition, enhanced disease resistance, and improved tolerance against drought. CRISPR-Cas9 system is applied to modify several agricultural plants. In rice plants, herbicide tolerance and bacterial infections are long-standing problems. Recently, CRISPR-Cas9 has been used to knock out herbicide tolerance genes, create hybrids, and alter susceptibility to bacterial infections. Second is about tomato plants. The technology has been used to edit recessive mutation in tomato plants, preventing needle-like leaves. Regarding the plant maize, the maize genome has also been successfully modified using the CRISPR-Cas9. 
traits that have been altered using this technology include male sterility, lignin biosynthesis, herbicide tolerance, RNA metabolism, secondary metabolism, grain composition, and drought tolerance. Work is also being done to lower the amount of phytic acid or PA in maize. It is necessary to lower the amount of phytic acid because it is poorly digested in humans and poses a threat to the environment. This is where the topic on CRISPR-Cas9 system application ends. The following are some of the related scientific studies concerning CRISPR-Cas9. CRISPR provides acquired resistance against viruses and prokaryotes. Barango and colleagues analyzed the CRISPR sequences of virus S. thermophilus strains, including closely related industrial strains and phage-resistant variants. The results of their study revealed that CRISPR loci can indeed be altered during the generation of phage resistant mutants and also establish a link between CRISPR content and phage sensitivity. These findings suggest that the presence of a CRISPR spacer identical to a phage sequence provides resistance against phages containing the particular sequence. Permanent alteration of PCSK9 with in vivo CRISPR-Cas9 genome editing is the study that aims to assess whether genome editing using a clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats CRISPR-associated system can efficiently introduce loss-of-function mutations into the endogenous PCSK9 gene in vivo and use adenovirus to express CRISPR-associated 9 and a CRISPR-guide RNA targeting PCSK9 in mouse liver where the gene is specifically expressed. When delivered by adenovirus, CRISPR-Cas9 produces efficient knockout of PCSK9 in mouse hepatocytes in vivo. The knockout of PCSK9 by CRISPR-Cas9 in mouse liver results in reduced plasma PCSK9 protein and cholesterol levels. This approach may have therapeutic potential for the prevention of cardiovascular diseases in humans. Harnessing the CRISPR-Cas9 system to disrupt latent HIV-1 provirus. Hirotaka and his team showed the potential of the CRISPR-Cas9 system to edit the HIV-1 genome and block its expression by editing HIV-1 integrated proviral DNA. Their study successfully disrupted the expression of HIV-1 provirus utilizing the CRISPR-Cas9 system. More importantly, this disruption not only restricted transcriptionally active provirus, it also blocked the expression of latently integrated provirus. The results in this study suggest that the CRISPR-Cas9 system may be a useful tool for curing HIV-1 infection. And this concludes our presentation. Thank you 